guys, it's Rob. And I'm taking advantage of my long commute home to talk about Transformers Go Episode 1. This is how I do things. Like, I have an hour commute home and an hour commute to work. And while on the way to work, it ain't nothing happening uh, this way because it's like traffic city. But right now, it's actually 6.46 a.m. So the roads are kind of clear because I, actually, I take a uh, more rural road rope route home that's a little more calm and peaceful. Well, the rush hour ride to work is like Mad Max crazy. And if I took the same way I take to work home, the same mileage, um, it would be Mad Max crazy. And to be honest with you, I've been up all night. It's, I work from 6 to 6. I'm tired. Um, so this is pretty cool. I can just kind of hold my phone and people assume I'm looking at a GPS. But anyway, earlier today, which was, I guess, technically yesterday. Oh, it's Transformers Go episode one. I forgot. Yeah, that was a, a verbal typo. For the guys uh, and gals of you that are not in the know, Transformers Go is Takara Tomy's um, sort of Beast Hunter spin-off. Uh, it's sort of like their little... I don't know if it's supposed to be taking place post-Beast Hunters or during Beast Hunters, but it's taking place somewhere during. Um, it's, sort of bas it's basically like an extended line, toy line, with a couple more Autobots and some refakes of the credit cards. And these little videos, I'm, those, I'm not, I'm just confused with me. I don't know if they're coming with the toys or with magazines or with both, but there's little video uh, episodes in this series. Uh, and the first episode was like 12 minutes, and it had exactly enough plot for 12 minutes. Um, the video, of course, like it's in Japanese, so I don't really know what person passed me is like putting on makeup while they're driving. Um, where was I saying? Uh, was, uh, the video had like options for subtitles, and I clicked them, but I couldn't get them to work. I guess I needed run the video through Flash with this thing going. I don't know. I will, hey, hey. So I watched it, but luckily the plot was simple enough to hear what was going on despite it being in a foreign language. Um, the show, I'm not going to go uh, describing the plot or anything because the plot was pretty much Jid finds Transformers, Transformers fight the end. That was it. Um, it really kind of reminded me of a mix of Magic Force and uh, Car robots, robots in the skies. Uh, it kind of reminded me a lot of those two. And visually, it was a lot like Energon or Superlink, uh, being that it had that same sort of CGI mixed with cell animation. And truthfully, one of the reasons I really wanted to see this, I really like traditional uh, cell animated cartoons. So it was nice to see my robots back again in one of those, even though they were CGI like in you know, Energon. But I didn't really mind it so much. The budget was apparently really low because there wasn't a whole lot of animation. Like the Predacons pretty much just stood there and went <laughs> and like glowing hand and like a bomb minister just kinda of looking like he's about to do something. And like the Autobots would hit him and he like dissipate and they'd go like <laughs> and he'd reappear and do something. You know, it's it's really kinda of odd. It was I get, it's very much like something you've seen on news grounds a few years ago. Um, but once, it's a little budget, a little packet thing. And like Ben Yee had said to me on Facebook, it's an extended toy commercial. And he's absolutely right, and it shows. Um, I don't exactly... I, I need some subtitles to kind of figure out what was going on. Because it would kind of go back and forth from like feudal Japan to, I guess, modern day. So I'm assuming the uh, Predacons were, it goes back basically back to when the Predacons in that area were defeated and they've come back. Which, like I said, well, kind of reminds me of Magic Force with the um, Tender Decepticon kind of coming back from how they were going, uh, from how they were like defeated in uh, prehistory. And this dude next to me is jamming out. I don't know to what. I kind of hope it's something awesome. But you know it's just like, call me maybe or something.
any, I guess I have no clue. I mean, I'm here making a video while I'm driving. <laughs> so it's, you probably guess that I'm talking because it's the year 2013. You can, like, hands free talk while you're driving a lot of people do. Say, no, dude, I'm doing something that's much labor. I'm talking about a cartoon on the webcam on my cell phone. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I'm guessing, like, it was sort of like a flashback explaining where the Predacons came from. When it kept flashing back to the of Japan. Now, go and behold, like, go figure the subtitles are a really feel that it has nothing to do with that, but I'm guessing that's what happened. One of the weird things was uh, the data disk. You guys remember our sound wave and last year's data disk from Generations. Uh, there's a data disk. Like, this kid's grabbing, like, he's in his grandfather's shrine, and he's running around with it, and at one point he cries on it, and he tears like, the magic comes out, and the Autobots come out of the ground. That's one of those things where I'm pretty sure the subtitles would not make make any more sense. It's just one of those things you kind of expect with Japanese robot cartoons. Sometimes they're just really weird to the Western audience, and I think that was one of those times. Um, also, in some of the flashbacks, each side had data disks on like their flagpoles. So it's like the data disks mean something in this cartoon, and which kind of makes me hope that they make like sort of special edition data disk or whatever. How many more times can I say data disk while well, I do this data disk? And uh, hey, data disk, he's still rocking out. Uh, at this point, I bet it's Ace of Base. Yeah, he's got some sighing going on. And holy crap, I drive a black Honda Fit. And there is a black Honda fit behind me with a bald guy with a beard. Holy crap, this is what it sounds like when the doves cry. This is exactly what I'm doing. Anyway, um, so I kind of wonder if there's going to be some sort of special edition data disc later. And I kind of hope so, and I'd like to get it because I like the data discs. I know they're not the best toys in the world. In fact, they're kind of crappy. But like, say, something about them, I just can't... I don't know, I like them. And I'd really like the uh, bird mode one. It's like, even bat, I guess Rat Bat, even though he's not a bird. Uh, that was a really good toy to me. So if those get some new life in this, that'd be cool to me, at least to me. I'd probably be able to buy it. Um, but, it's just kind of, like, um, it's kind of bizarre. Like, the scene where the Predacons are fighting, uh, the Autobots, they pretty much say, ha, 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 and, like, a bombness does something, and they poke him with their sword, and he goes away, and they say, ha, and he comes back, and they change it to another configuration, and he was up. And, um, he, he pokes him with another sword, and they fall over. And that's pretty much the fight, is the Autobot Combiner pokes a bombness, or whatever his Japanese name is. I know he has a Japanese name that's different, but it kind of falls on here. So it's like the Japanese repaint of bombness. It's okay if I don't get it right. Um, they did it a few times and then they just go away. Um, it's kind of bizarre, and I'd like to get some clarity on what actually happened. Uh, even though I watched it, I should be able to figure out what happened, but not so much. But uh, it's definitely worth a watch, especially for 12 minutes. You know, it's like, hey... That sure was 12 minutes that I don't really mind spending. Um, makes me a little more interested in the toys. I'd, I'd like to get some of those Predacons, definitely, because I'm nuts over Predacons and Beast Hunters. And, like, the robot toys I'd like, but it looks like they're really expensive. So maybe when they go down to a more affordable price, I'll uh, buy some. But I'm kind of hoping they make, like, figurines, like the Kabaya stuff or whatever. Like, uh, some little candy toy figurines or whatever. I'd be completely happy with that. So, it, it does make me say, hey, I'd like to get these toys, even though the cartoon is really weird. Or at least so far, episode one's really weird. Maybe episode two will be perfectly logical. And holy crap, quit staring at me. I tell you, traffic in this town is just rude. Uh, you know, some people are driving around reading books, and some asshole is making a video with his cell phone. Well, that was my thoughts on Beast Hunters, or Transformers Go episode one. So uh, we'll see what happens next time.